Hello, welcome back, everybody. We are continuing our conversation that we started last time about Endgame. This is the Blue Element Elephant Brigade with Phil Hernandez, Christy Alecki, John Hoover, and I am Josh Schwartz. Welcome back. What is going on? You guys had more time to digest and think about other things and since we've uh since we last talked the we'll eventually talk about the uh Spider-Man trailer that kind of hopefully puts a nice ribbon on this whole uh, part of the phase 3 Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch the trailer. So, I may like, It's fine. We'll tell you all this we'll we'll tell you a story about it. <laughs> story about it. Um yeah, what are we talking about first, you guys? Uh, where did we leave off? Or what we got on the uh, docket tonight, Phil? Well, one of the things uh, I wanted to get to was the uh, difference in the uh, battles between uh, Game of Thrones and Endgame. But I know, Josh, you haven't <laughs> seen this. Uh, oh, I'm fine. I, yeah, I haven't seen them. Um, I, yeah, I have seen, like, the uh, dragon-like fight and some other things that, like, were online and things, but... If yeah, if you guys want to talk about that, go ahead. I can throw my comments about the the. Put you out to me. my uh, baby sister who just tuned in to listen. By the way, baby Kimmy's out there listening. Has a name. What is her Hi. name? Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. Hey. Or Kim. So the difference between the two battles. Yeah, yeah. I remember saying that uh, I really wanted for this uh, Game of Thrones battle to last more than one episode. And of course, it did not. Yeah. Um, so in one of the one show, you can see the battle, and the other show you can't. <laughs> <laughs> How is that for starters? <laughs> there is that. I watched it the first time. I was uh, in San Antonio for work in a hotel that didn't have HBO, and um, watched it on my laptop the first time. Uh, which sucked. And then Josiah watched it on our big 52-inch TV. And he talked about how dark it was, and he had to go adjust some of the settings, and we watched it a second time, and it was a little better, but dim still, like very washed out. Um, yeah. So I heard people, I've had people, uh, some of my friends complain about it, and some of the ones that actually have, like, the TVs that are, properly backlit like with true blacks and stuff like that they said it was better so i'm wondering if i know they wanted the episode to be very dark but i wonder what if they maybe limited the devices they were testing it on or something yeah i don't know but it was it seemed like our options were super dark or super washed out hey phil you you mute the facebook video <laughs> yeah and i mean the Game of Thrones, they used the darkness as part of the plot device, right? It was intended to be dark for certain aspects of it had to be dark, right? So, hey, spoilers to anybody that hasn't seen it yet. Um, I apologize in advance, but five, four, three, two, one. So there's a big charge by the cavalry at the uh, start of the ba Game of Thrones battle, right? They know that the uh, Night King's forces are out there somewhere, and that they have a massive army, but they're not really sure exactly where they're at because they can't see them because there's no light. And Christy, I think you're muted now. Yeah, I can't hear you. <laughs> We're having technical difficulties tonight. I didn't do anything. Hey, Laura, welcome to the uh, podcast. Oh, we can hear you again. You can? Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, now. Fine. okay. Yeah. Anyways, so... There's a cav there's a the cavalry ends up with fire ablazoned swords and there's a cavalry charge out into the night. And all you see are the little pinpricks of light of their swords as they charge away, and they use that to show the cavalry just being decimated. And then they use it to build suspense after that happens of like, okay, you know the cavalry just got decimated, a few people come back from the cavalry and run past the lines of soldiers, and then you're just sitting there waiting. What was the scale of, like, um, the number of combatants compared to an endgame? 
Um, pretty comparable or did the hard to tell? <laughs> did the Avengers side have a yeah? They had the Wakandans for their army. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say it's probably comparable as far as scale goes. Yeah, because the undead side is just massive, right? You don't really know how big it is, but it's holy shit, it's big. And then the um, Winterfield's side is a. Uh, you know, it's a typical castle garrison, probably a little bit more than that, actually, because they do have an army. They have a standing army that's been brought to them to help out, along with a couple of dragons. So I'd say it's comparable on scale of size as, and probably scale of heroes. The number of like your main characters are involved is probably comparable yeah. on at least the living side. The undead side, you only have really the Night King as a main character and his lieutenants who are kind of like just nameless lieutenants. Yeah, the so it's kind of similar to Endgame, where you have a singular bad guy basically on the other side with a bunch of nameless support characters, yeah. and then the good guys have are all the all the faces yeah. that you recognize and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty apt description, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I feel like they did a. I don't know if better is the right word, but they were showing like death a lot, like real, not real, obviously, but like death, like people dying um, in Game of Thrones, maybe a little bit more than in game. For yeah. sure. um, just sort of the brutal um, sword fight uh, carnage yeah. that you mm-hmm. would expect. Yeah. Um, you yeah know. What was in game was PG 13, right? Yes. So that's part of that, right? One's HBO, one's, you know, a PG-13 movie. Right. Being put out by Disney, no less. <laughs> and so. correct me if I'm wrong, but the only, like, hero who died in Endgame was um, Iron Man. Um, Black Widow. There was Black Widow. Black Widow. Well, Black in the battle, earlier, in the yeah. final battle. Yeah. Probably, I would imagine some random Wakandans you could probably find that die during the battle. Right. If you you know go back and watch it, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as people care that we care about, yeah, just Iron Man during the battle itself. What were your thoughts on it, Phil? I was just thinking about uh, how long, uh, how much screen time each battle got. So the uh, the end game uh, final battle was probably about uh, half an hour, forty five minutes, and Maybe. the Game of Thrones. Yep. May have been about the same, but it it kind of felt uh, a little bit longer. I think it probably uh, was longer because it was the majority of, of that one? episode. What, I'm sorry, yeah, John? That was a long episode on Game of Thrones. Yeah, it was it was like almost an hour and a half episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. the battle was pretty much the entirety. I would say that it felt that the Game of Thrones felt a lot longer and not necessarily in a good way. So do you think they're going to have like a, a an even bigger battle for like the finale episodes? I Not, think it would be a smaller battle. I mean, I think it'll have less screen time. Yeah. Yeah, and the there's not the scale of forces anymore that there was there cuz I mean, the so the standing armies now that basically they they're talking about in Westeros are the rem- remnants of the one that was at Winterfell. And then an army that's been brought across what they call the Narrow Sea, uh, to act as Cersei's army. That compared to the Night King's army is nothing. You know, it's a small force. There's actually a picture of the for- of their uh, army online now that I saw a little bit a little while ago. It's out there. So to kind of give a visual, if you haven't seen it, there's a point where the dead are like army ants. Like it's a swarm. It's a just a flood of basically zombies which Mm -hmm. i hate zombies but um (laughs) but yeah like that's the scale it's like this massive massive just um number it's everybody between the wall and winterfell that didn't get to winterfell quickly enough um so yeah and then at one point uh he re-raises or raises all the dead so 
Mm -hmm. One question uh, I had was, uh, does that include the undead that were killed? Or is it, uh, or is it just a freshly dead? I suspect since they're using Dragonstone that once you kill a white with Dragonstone, they're for real dead because they crumble. You know, like uh, the giant was the best example of that, um, which was, pr I thought was an awesome scene. Yeah. The death of Lady Mormont. Mm -hmm. Mormont? Mormont. Yeah. Liana yeah. Mormont. Yep. Um, yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes because uh, I love that little actress. She's, <laughs> she's cool. Um, Game of Thrones is really good about making uh, all of the females very strong characters, or at least most of them. Most of them. Uh, it took Sansa a while, but she got there. Well, and it her character. To, so I will say right now, my prediction is that Sansa is going to end up on the Iron Throne. Um, I think it's going to be her. I think that she knows how to play. She learned from the best, and so. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. And, <laughs> and nobody's uh, looking for her. She learned from the best. So I suspect she's going to win it all. Um, but um, yeah, Sansa took a while, but I think her character development is very real. Like, I think it's, she was spoiled and naive and then horrible, horrible shit happened to her and it toughened her up and made her harder. Um, and I don't think we like to think of that being a real trajectory for women, but it is. Okay, um, but that's uh, that's basically the uh, evolution of the Black Widow character. She was one of the most badass women out there, and now she's dead. You know, it's, I mean, it was by her own hand, but the circumstances led up to where she just had to die. Yeah. But, uh. uh I saw this interesting like read or take on the movies uh, today um, where it showed, or was talking about how the heroes lost the first movie because they weren't willing to, to make any sacrifices and Thanos was. And then in this movie, they win because they were able to make they were and they still don't make sacrifices for other people, but they all make self sacrifices. That's interesting. The, the thing I liked about Black Widow in that I just knew they weren't going to let her win the battle between her and Hawkeye. Like yeah. the gesture was going to be the thing. And I appreciated very much that she won. Like she was the one yep. to do it. I mean, I, I don't like the loss of that character, but I just felt like it would have been easy to pull that punch a little bit um and i like the fact that they didn't you know um, yeah yeah they knew they showed too much of hawkeye's like hawkeye opened the was the beginning of the movie they showed you know how he i forgot what his character uh shoot when he's in japan like it's based on a comic book like he becomes ronin just is it just ronin uh, I, guess. Oh, I, thought it was, yes. I mean that's the character that's, thing, right? yeah and uh it shows you know kind of how he's fallen and how he's having a tough, tough time dealing with it and they did the same thing for um black widow but i don't know they just focused on the hawkeye character so i was my bets was on him to to make it and have a redemption arc yeah but yeah um I'll take all the Hawkeye I can get. I like the character, so. I like the I wish, actor. There, I wish that there was, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's part of it is I like, you know. Um, Jeremy Renner? Jeremy Renner, yeah, Renner. I could remember Renner. I can't remember his first name. Yeah, I like him quite a bit, so. There's I'll, still, I'll take as much of that as I can get. They're still in. So here, what are your guys' opinion on this? In the first movie, we see Gamora. We see Thanos in the Soul Stone, and he sees Gamora uh, briefly at the end is – I think we talked about this if where that was just a memory or if that was actually her. And if that Gamora is still in the soul stone and if then black widow is also in there now, but I, I kind of, I'm on the, I think it's maybe just a memory or something. I think the Rosos have been asked about it. And I think they've said that it's not 
Gamora, it's not Gamora specifically. You know, it may be some aspect of or whatever, but she, it's not as though she's there to be brought back or something, I think is what they said. All right. Yeah, because they uh, answer a bunch of questions after the fact. They, uh, so I don't know if you guys saw this, but they clarified the Captain America thing we were talking about last time. I didn't see that. If you want to dive into that. So they, yeah. uh, so I, they also clarified a little bit about the time travel stuff and how it works. So basically what happens is in the Marvel Universe rules of time travel, if you go back and do a minor change, nothing happens. The timeline will maintain itself and there's no butterfly effect. It's got time inertia. Yes. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> However, if you go back and make a big change, that will cause a separate timeline to split off. And you now have a multiverse. Right. And they've said, so the MCU is now a multiverse universe where you have multiple timelines, multiple realities, really, right, that are taking place. Yeah. I don't and like it. And so, what's that? So I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down, I, Josh. I'm, actually, I'm cool with it because it explains a bunch of stuff. It allows a bunch of things to happen. No, I, I, I'm fine with their explanation. I don't like, I, I don't really care for like a splintering and having all of these other, I don't know. I, I like having just one main universe to deal with. Right. Yeah, because it allows them to do kind of whatever the heck they want. It makes it a lot easier to not maintain a single universe, right? They can do all kinds of crap now. Although if they bring like into the Spider Verse like that, like into <laughs> like live action, that'd be that'd be killer. That'd be cool. I find the so, whole diverse thing kind of tedious. Like, so yeah. Captain America though. So here's the explanation of him and how it fits in. Is that he? went back and him going back and being with Peggy and everything else he would have done as a result of that, because he's still Captain America and he's still going to act like Captain America and Steve Rogers. So he's going to stop Hydra and he's going to go and find Bucky. And he's going to do all these things that he knows about now. That's a major event. And that causes a splintering of the timeline to where his reality is now separate from the main one. So there weren't two Captain Americas. There was the one in which he went back and split off the timeline and did his thing and saved Bucky and whatever else. And then there was the other one. Oh, the, so there the weren't prompt. two, there weren't two Captain Marvel or sorry, Captain America's in the same timeline. Right. Or maybe Captain there was, America. but who knows what Steve Rogers time, what his path becomes when Bucky doesn't die. And you know, he, maybe he takes care of the red skull. Who knows what he did when he went back. Right. So he may have just, he may never have even gotten this, the serum, he may have just shown up as Captain America one day and nobody knows where this guy came from. See, because I thought what ha happened was Captain America from the past, early Captain America, just did his thing. And then Steve Rogers from the future just basically became, you know, leave it to Beaver's dad. <laughs> just hung out with Peggy and danced and right. had martinis at five. Yeah. And, and just so chilled out. Not only that, but Captain America ages slower than the average person does. Anyways. Yeah. So he has lived to be that old. He's lived for hundreds of years now to actually be that old. So he's been all over the place. And not only does he know how to time travel, but he can jump between the multiverses somehow also. Because he came back to their prime multiverse and shows up there on the bench, like at that specific time in that prime universe. Let's just call it the prime one, the one that has all of our heroes in it, right? So that's how they explain that. He's been around for a long time now. And he, you know, that's how they get around the idea of two Captain Americas and one not doing jack shit for decades on end. I mean, I'm fine with it. It's just, you know. Dancing. And that's yeah. also reinforced by the uh, Spider-Man trailer. Yes. Yes. I forgot what they actually topic. talked about. Uh, the specific wording they used, but they basically revealed that there was a multiverse now hmm. i should have wrote stuff down was part of what you were saying that uh was that uh captain america went back in time and basically prevented some people from being created like uh bucky the winter soldier i mean possibly right they haven't said what captain america did when he went back um or i would imagine time that he went back to my guess would be that we're going to get one of those what if episodes is going to be captain america showing up on the red skull's doorstep 
and you get to see him fighting the Red Skull before the Red Skull has access to the Tesseract <laughs> and everything else. See, part of my problem with that, well, my big problem with that is that if he went back and changed time in such a way that uh, a lot of these uh, superheroes were never created, you still have Thanos searching for the stones and on his mission to destroy half or kill half of the uh, universe. Mm -hmm. So then in the future, you're not going to have the Avengers to uh, combat him. So he's going to succeed. Captain America just goes around to different uh, times and continually chokes out baby Thanos. <laughs> all of these dimensions. Timelines. <laughs> yeah, but that one's fine. So he's, he's so he saving like entire next. universes every, every day. He just like wakes up, has some coffee, time travels, goes chokes Thanos baby out, and then like, you know, goes about his day. Has his five o'clock martini. Yeah, yeah. Gets into his twin bed next he to could Peggy. Do, he could do Hitler in the afternoon, Thanos in the morning, and, uh, you know, literally save uh, billions, trillions of lives. But also create <laughs> billions and trillions of imperiled lives. It's a yeah. little masturbatory if you ask me. <laughs> I mean... I could see him doing it. <laughs> which which one? <laughs> uh, I could pretend. Um, so do oh, we yeah. have a Spider-Man trailer on our list of things we're going to talk about? Do we have it? Um, not not specifically, not it, specifically. Like the, the things in it. We can we can go into it now uh, for a little bit. I think it's. I would say at least just it provides some clarifying facts, right? For uh, or provides information for Endgame. Yes. Yeah. So the biggest one is that Thanos broke part of the reality when he snapped his fingers and has allowed things to cross over. It is something that Nick Fury specifically says in the trailer. Do you want to mention the uh, character by name? Uh, oh, so um, you're talking about uh, Mysterio, right? Yeah. 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 Which I don't know. I didn't. I never really read too much about him in the in comics. Uh, he's. I. I don't really know his origin. I figured. I mean, he's always been a villain. So I don't know. In the trailer, he's portrayed as like this hero. So that's what he does in the comics too. He pretends to be a hero. Okay. Yeah. He's basically. He's. I believe. So I've never. I know what his origin is, kind of. I don't really know. I've never read the actual comics with him in it. Yeah. Um, but my understanding is that he is jealous of Spider-Man, and so he wants to have that attention for himself, and so he basically creates a bunch of um, disasters that he can save people from. And he's a special effects artist in the uh, comic book. So that's his background, is he's a special effects expert. And so he uses those special effects to, you know, make himself a hero and then eventually becoming a villain and still using special effects, basically. He basically has superhero Munchausen disorder. Let's go with yes. <laughs> yes. That, that was messed up. Sorry, my dog is losing her mind. I don't know if it you guys happens. can hear her. Yes. <laughs> it's all good. Puppy. Come here. Oh, God. <laughs> right back. All good. So I am hey, kind of surprised that uh, Fury is uh, coming back into the, into the uh, limelight uh, with Spider-Man. You know, it kind of seemed like uh, Iron Man took over the spotlight uh, of MCU for a while. Right. And I hadn't seen Nick Fury since, what, uh, the Avengers? Yeah, you see him in uh, the second one, right? Yeah. Age of Ultron, because he is hanging out at... Uh, Clint Barton and Hawkeye's farm. Sorry about right? that. Yeah. Chilling in the garage. Yeah, well, he's at the end of he's in the end credit scene for Infinity War. You know, he shows briefly. He's at Tony's funeral this time. He was, you know, made a major character in Captain Marvel. Um, but I figured I kind of thought that the, the Nick Fury character was kind of going to be retired, like just not show up as much. Uh, but I, it looks like he's back in spider-man yeah um yeah i'm kind of surprised they chose him as being the mentor type character for this one i mean i guess maybe it makes sense if they're you know if they're recruiting mysterio to fight something they're gonna have spider-man fight side by side with him um yeah i don't know yeah. all right I don't, 
yeah, I don't know how they're going to reboot this if it's possible. And we've got too many characters that continue on. <clears throat> yeah, well, hopefully, this, hopefully Spider-Man addresses some of the issues that I brought up last time with just how the world uh, reacts to having all these people like come back yeah. and like the good and the bad like of that and everything. Um, but uh, speaking of people that, well, aren't really back, <laughs> but let's move on and talk about uh, new Gamora, old Gamora. I don't know which <laughs> way, which way you want to talk about it, but I don't know how they're alternate Gamora. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what, how that if they're going to maintain that relationship with uh, her and Peter Quill, she has no memory of that. That is not like that Gamora. So yeah, it's going to be kind of tedious, right? If they like reboot the relationship and he has to build it back up, like that seems we've seen that already. Yeah, he had to do it the first time. Pretty yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like been there, done that. Okay, next. My guess is if they're going to do it it'll happen between this movie and the next movie mm. and we'll get a little bit of reference back to it. Like my guess is if it's going to happen, it will be in place the next time we see them. And then there'll be some jokes and some throwback or it won't happen. But I know- can't imagine them making us go through it again unless they turn it around and she has to chase him. Yeah. Well, hopefully like Peter actually has some more character development and grows up a bit since Mm. Thor is with them. He's been kind of the, the humor lately. I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be hilarious with both of them. uh, If they're going to be both in the next guardians of the galaxy volume three. Yeah. I wonder about that. If we'll see Thor like for five, 10 minutes and then he'll have to go kind of like captain Marvel in the end game, right? You see her in the beginning for a few minutes and then she's off doing her own thing for most of the movie. Yeah. There is a comic book called As Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> is there? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was never a Thor fan at all, like in the comics at all. Yeah. Never my character. Yeah. I have, yeah, me either. I have a couple of the weirder, epi- weirder issues. I have uh, Frog Thor. I have a horse Thor uh, comics, but um, I like him in the movies. Thor, I think Thor's got some weird stuff going on in, in his background. I uh, I like him in the movies. I think he's hilarious. Well, if I you think, go yeah, by, uh, awesome. I, I like the character a lot in the movies. Yeah, ne- same. According to Nebula, uh, Gamora's choice for uh, for Quill was between him and a tree. and now you got thor thrown in so yeah uh, do we know what happened where did we get a scene with gamora and uh and nebula where they were going or what they were doing at the end of all of this i don't recall them being on the ship so i just remember thor um thor quill rocket and groot groot yeah that's all i remember um, what's his name? Had Dave Batista had to be there too, right? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no one can remember his name. <laughs> Let's call him Dave. It's fine. Yeah, Dave. Okay. <laughs> Dave was there hanging out, you know, bench yeah. pressing stuff or something. Standing still, so still, nobody could see him. Uh, yeah. Run away, Michelle, quickly. Yeah, there's spoilers all over the place. Get out now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to listen to this right now. No. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen both Game of Thrones and uh, Endgame. Yeah. 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 So, did, uh, is there anything you guys else want to say about Gamora? Like, the, we've kind of talked about her death. Uh, new Gamora's, I don't know what she's going to be up to, but. I don't really care about the new one, right? Because it's not the same character we had before. Same, like, yeah. 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 I I was surprised at how quickly New Gamora was like, yeah, my dad's a jerk face. Like, didn't that take some time initially for that to happen? Or I guess maybe she, she was did. already after him. She wanted the power stone to kill him. Okay. Yeah. I think she tells out. I think she tells Peter that right away, actually. And Jen pointed out that uh, she withheld the information about the location of the soul stone from him in the first place. Yeah. Okay. 
So, she so was it does make stuff. sense that she shifted really quickly in this movie, mm -hmm. given the opportunity. Yeah, and it's not like she had any real attachments to Nebula. You know, and so shooting Nebula in the chest isn't a departure from alternate Gamora's personality. I don't think... No, that part didn't surprise... I mean, that part surprised me a little bit because Gamora was always trying to protect Nebula. Like, they fought, they were pitted against each other, but she... It seems like she was always well, when, trying to get her to stop trying so hard, you know. And being, when Nebula shot Nebula, Gamora just screamed no and didn't even raise her gun. Yeah, so... Oh, that's right. Nebula killed herself, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. yeah Nebula right. killed Nebula. Yeah. Which I think is super symbolic and cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Her character has actually changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had a couple couple moments with like her and Rocket in the last movie. Mm -hmm. The last one. And in yeah. Endgame where they're holding hands. Yeah. And yeah. her being on the ship with Tony and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like she's been enabled to be um, kind. You mm -hmm. know. I always try to think about these things as allegories because she was so traumatized. Again, made perfect sense that she was the way she was and then given a different context, she could change and not be so afraid of being... Um, and even up, to, even up to the Getting last... Getting over her daddy issues. Nebula <laughs> just said that uh, he wouldn't let her change. You know, so she already disliked him. Yeah. Yeah, Thanos was very controlling. In... And so in the comic books, uh, Nebula plays a key role in the Infinity Gauntlet series. Uh, Thanos keeps her in this half dead state and just like has her follow him around as his daughter. She can't speak. She can barely walk. She's literally kind of like a half rotted corpse that is still that he keeps alive continually. And so she's like kind of always in pain and at the end, when spoilers for uh, Infinity Gauntlet comic book from the 90s, <laughs> at the end, how they actually win is Nebula grabs the gauntlet off uh, of Thanos. I forget exactly. She gets the gauntlet because he is not expecting her. And she immediately, like, like just, like, twists, like, Thanos up and, like, sends them all, like does all these things like horrible things to him. And while she's getting used to her powers, uh, they get the gauntlet off of her and kind of set everything straight. But in the comic books, she hates Thanos uh, and rightfully so, but yeah. That's neat. Um, she's one of my favorite characters actually. Um, yeah. She's grown on me a lot. Mm -hmm. started off not not so great but i was like we get it geez just stop <laughs> speaking of everybody's the, uh, uncomfortable with daddy issues but <laughs> speaking it's real of, man uh, it's real. future of uh characters and like father figures what mm -hmm. about the the kid at the funeral the kid yeah. who uh, was in what iron man 3 yep yep i had to look that up that was the uh, the kid that tony or well he helped Tony kind of get past his, his issues and stuff. Um, I don't remember all the plot of Iron Man three, but yeah, Tony's presumed dead and he meets this kid. I forget. Yeah. The, the kid yeah. kind of uh, helps him re regain uh, uh, power to his uh, Iron Man suit. And he's the Spider-Man just... of that movie. Basically he's the little kid that Tony kind of adopts. And Tony gives him a weapon to use against a bully at one point. And, yeah. you know, there's various points when he's kind of giving the kid a hard time by acting like, you know, that father figure type. Yeah, I guess that's weird. To ha it is kind of weird to have him there. I mean, I, I guess it shows that they maintained a relationship afterwards or that was something special. I don't know why they chose to put him in there. there well, I mean, I think that there was a lot of paternal stuff in this movie like a lot oh, yeah. and so and then specifically about tony um the way he was with spider-man the way he was with his daughter the way i mean he even with captain america in some respects um 
yeah, I think that there is a theme throughout, and it wouldn't surprise me if the makers of this film just had fatherhood on the on the brain, because there was a lot of fatherhood stuff in this movie. Um, My audio cut out for a second. Did you mention uh, Tony setting up the kid with uh, in his garage, all that stuff that he gave him? Yeah, I did real yes. briefly. Yep. Okay, so yeah. so that's basically the same thing that he does for uh, Peter Parker, right? Right. Yep. Sets the boats up uh, to be able to uh, develop because they can do all this stuff themselves. Maybe be his successor, just as Christy was uh, alluding to. Yeah, I think it was some fan service too. Was part of it, you know, just bringing back the main characters you had seen Tony interact with throughout the movie. I think it was part of it. Sure. Yeah. I would have I expected more people like that. I, I, I would have to go book back and see if there's anybody else that's still alive um, <laughs> that Tony interacted with. <laughs> but uh, I think it's cool that he's there. I just thought that there would have been other, instead of just like, here's all, this, all the living superheroes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think he's going to end up being somebody important? I don't think so. I think that was one and done. I think I don't think you'll see him again. But there Maybe were a wrong, lot of but... I mean, my understanding, because I haven't seen all the Marvel movies, is there were quite a few um, callbacks, which is, you know, to be expected. Yeah. I think they are setting up things for the future. I mean, there is um, Ant-Man's daughter. There's Tony's daughter. There are other... Tony's daughter. Yeah, there are other younger people in the movies that could be, you know, help the continuity of things moving, moving forward. Uh, I don't know if there's any precedent in that, that in the comic books for those characters or anything. Well, and then even um, Captain Marvel, her friend's daughter, I think, is important. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Can't think of what her name is off the top of my head, but yeah. Um, Do we want to talk about what we think is going to happen going forward? Galactus. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I don't know why. Uh, so I've I've seen people talk or mention that, and I don't know where they're pulling that idea from, other than they're going into space and it's a well-known villain from space. Right. And what's a bigger threat than Thanos? Well, yeah. And Galactus. They, they now have the rights to the Fantastic Four, and right. Galactus has has been in that usually world of of heroes one of their traditional villains yeah and silver surfer yeah but they also have the x-men now too so right and since well i guess that's actually the setup for the multiverse since there's also the x-men they could be in their own multiverse dimension and then when they want to make cameos they can like you know pull them they pull everybody together again or something (laughs) have you guys read the comic uh secret wars yes the old one or the new one oh yeah I only know the old one. Yes. I mean, that's yes for, yes to both to for me. Yeah, it's where uh, Venom comes from. The original or, origin of Venom. Yeah. This yeah, is the, where you guys lose me. I'm all like, I've read exactly one comic book <laughs> in my life. It was Captain Marvel. <sighs> yeah, so Secret Wars is, uh, well, you, you brought up, Phil. What's Secret Wars? Well, the basic premise is that uh, there's this being called they call the Beyonder, who rips pieces of planets from all over the galaxy and then builds one planet uh, for him for his own uh, play area and then grabs a bunch of uh, superheroes from all these different planets and, and then puts them on there and tells them they have to fight. Yep. That's and pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. It was basically it, it, the whole, I don't think there was a whole lot of story like meaning behind it originally i think it was an excuse to like what if we just had like i don't know some way to have everybody fight there is like a lot of cool lore that came out of it uh spider woman like was the first appeared in there uh the black suit which became venom like showed up there uh there's she hulk was from there too i think yeah i think you're right um but yeah it's a neat they did this there's a secret wars too also yeah, um, where it comes to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't. I don't remember all that one. <laughs> what got me uh, thinking about that is uh, the fact that you said that uh, Marvel now has uh, what uh, Spider-Man and X-Men. 
So they yeah, don't have Spider Man technically. That's yeah. still a Sony property. Oh, is it? Yeah, but it's, they have the X Men Mar- and Fantastic like, Four. Marvel Comic Book has like Sony has bought the rights for the movies from Marvel Comic Book, but then Marvel has the rights from Sony to use them in movies, like sort of. But they also have they still have the rights for other things in the Spider Man universe. That's why they made the Venom movie last year and i don't know what else is in there but they they can still do stuff but yeah. he's on loan or something they got back the fox properties so they now have x-men they have fantastic four um those are the two big ones yeah i think those are the only ones they they've actually done movies with that yeah. i can think of so do you think it's possible to see a mashup of all these people, including the X-Men? So there's actually a specific comic that has a mashup of the Avengers and the X-Men fighting each oh. other. I mean, it's ha- actually happened a couple of times, but the big one is, unfortunately, the, what the Fox, the Fox is doing right now, the Phoenix Saga. And in the comic book, it's a much more epic, much, much bigger event that's done, in my opinion, much... Uh, It's much more interesting. And that's actually, I think maybe that might be the direction they go. I think phase four of, because we're going into phase four, right? Mm -hmm. Of MCU, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty dark because one of the big things we learned in Endgame was that if you remove an Infinity Stone from reality, then you get a darker reality split off because of that, where it should have been, right? The uh, Ancient One tells, tells us that. That... Without, if you take this time stone out of here, it's going to make this reality much darker, right? It's an element of the universe needs to be here. Thanos destroyed all the Infinity Stones, and then the temporary ones they brought in, Captain America took back and put back in their original spots. So we now have a, the prime reality has no Infinity Stones now. I would imagine we'll see a much darker reality. You'll see Galactus, and you'll see you know, whatever other major threats come about. And maybe we'll get to the point where they ha- feel like they have to find a way to save the universe from collapsing on itself or something like that. And the thing that has tied all the multiverses together in the Marvel comics is the m crystal, which just happens to be also where the Phoenix Force is from. And so that would bring Phoenix in, that would bring the X-Men in, that would bring... So the Shi'ar in which I'm amazed that we haven't seen them yet in these comics. You know, it brings in a lot of stuff. Yeah, the Shi'ar uh, leader, L- Lalandra. L- Lalandra, Deathbird. Um, oh, what's their uh, their version of Superman? Oh, I can't think of what his dumb name is. Um, well, she had a pretty it's not Galactus, but something like that. Xavier. Hmm. What's that? She had a pretty significant relationship with Xavier. Yes, she did. As a matter of fact, her and Xavier have a son who becomes Legion, who kills Xavier and causes the Age of Apocalypse. God, I know too much about comics. So they own. <laughs> so who did? Uh, who owned Death Deadpool? Was that was that through Fox? Yeah. So that, Deadpool that was is part Deadpool. of the Marvel Universe now, or How MCU. Many versions of Deadpool are there now? Like, I think there's at least three, but I'm not sure. There's only one Deadpool, and that Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah Disney, but Disney Princess Ryan Reynolds. He was, he was Deadpool in every uh, movie. He just. I, I, yes. I, yeah, he was Deadpool in the non the non good Deadpool movie. Yeah, but he killed that Deadpool. He went back in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he created a separate multiverse reality. Yeah. That's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> and also he um, gladiator that's who it is who that's the I character think? i was thinking of from the shiar who's basically superman except instead of his powers relying on the uh yellow sun it relies on his self-confidence <laughs> so there's a comic book where cannonball from x-force who's a pretty pathetic character beats up gladiator from the shiar he basically kicks what? superman's ass <laughs> Because he makes him less confident in himself. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, kids. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do some homework on uh, where Captain Marvel gets her powers from if it's not like the Infinity Stones. Now that they're... Uh, yeah. 
Um, so she would and, be the last remaining uh, signal, the, the last remnant of the Infinity Stones, right? Yeah. I think the stones are still, the power of the stones is th still there. They're just not crystallized. They're like diffused throughout the universe now. They'll need spells. Yeah, and another way you could get Avengers V, another way you could get Avengers V X Men, is have Rogue steal Captain Marvel's powers, and then the X Men have to protect Rogue from the rest of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So in the comic books, Rogue gets her powers from Carol Danvers. She basically mind wipes Carol Danvers, puts her into a coma for however long, and uh, gets all of her powers from her. Oh, well, I, I had only uh, seen her take uh, powers from other mutants, which is uh, human-based powers. Yeah, in the comments, uh, she can do it to whoever. Yeah, and if she takes them long enough, she just has them, kind yep. of. Along with part of their personality. It kind of, like, one of Rogue's issues that she's always had is that she's kind of a split personality because Carol Danvers was popping around inside of her head. I never knew uh, it was uh, Captain Marvel that uh, she had absorbed. I just never caught that. Yeah, back, back originally. I mean, I'm, I don't, it could have been, I don't, it might have been rebooted and changed. They must have retconned it by now, right? Yeah. They've rebooted that character several times. This I know because of the documentary at Alamo Draft House that comes on before <laughs> the movie. And also because my favorite <laughs> restaurateur here in Austin, when we went to, get dessert after the movie made me go get the comic books so i have several of the comic books and then the girl in the comic book store was like you only want to read the comics written by this person when this person was involved because that informed the characterization of the movie you don't want to read any of this other stuff yet because that will be confusing so Ooh. i actually do know a little comic books i found out that the creator of thanos and the original Infinity war was did it had a cameo he was in the support group uh what's his name that's Joe, cool somebody i forgot uh so I was have, one of the russo brothers right yep, yep yeah okay yeah i have his like autograph like on an infinity war or the infinity gauntlet number one um but yeah, yeah he was he was in that in that group with uh guys are with Cap. <laughs> yeah, i think that's all that's in that my pillow Kind of like uh, John Favreau having Happy get together with uh, <laughs> with uh, Aunt May just just so he could bring in uh, uh, what's her name Mar Marissa Tomei. Mm -hmm. If I had the chance to write myself into a scene with uh, Marissa Tomei, I'd take. <laughs> Me too. That's, I really hope that I think as we go to four and five, we get some of the uh, other X Men villains too, instead of like Magneto. Um, Apocalypse. What are X Men villains that we had? Magneto again. Magneto again. Uh, Sentinels. Sentinels again. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're, yep. So the X Men have an awesome Rogues Gallery. They have just fantastic villains, and you don't see any of them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. A lot of them with like well developed characters that are you know can be yeah. are nuanced and not just like a lot of the a lot of the main Marvel villains, like at least in the comic books, they're very cheesy. They're because they're a bit older. You know, they they were they were built back in the, you know, they didn't really need a complex story or anything for them to be bad. And of course, um, it'd be fantastic if we can finally get Doctor Doom done, somewhat right. Like, in theory, there's a possibility we could have like a Doctor Doom show up, and we could end up with a war between Latvia and Wakanda or something like that, which would be an awesome movie to watch that would be that would fantastic be cool. yeah that would be make a great movie uh one thing we haven't talked about i'm probably gonna wrap up soon uh now that sam is captain america and these future movies do you think that they're just gonna be the movies will just be captain america and then like or do you think they'll I don't know, change the name or just how do you think they're going to carry on that character in those so, movies? How long do we think Sam's going to live before he dies? Because yeah, Falcon's great and all. He ain't no Captain America though. 
I can't it wasn't enhanced. <laughs> Captain America was enhanced by the uh, serum from the Tesseract. Right? right. First time that somebody grabs the shield and throws it with his arm strapped into it, we're either going to see Falcon depart from his arm or we're going to see him shatter against a rock somewhere, you know? Yeah, I don't know that much it's about arms from the comic books either. So I don't know how he, like, how that's been dealt with in the in the literature. I think it's... The literature. That's hilarious. <laughs> the literature. I'll yeah, have to I'm, do a literature review <laughs> and get back to you. When Captain dies in the comics, is it Bucky or Hawkeye that takes over as Captain Bucky, America? Bucky does. Bucky I, does. I know right? at least once, and I don't know if it's happened multiple times, but Bucky, yeah. ta- Bucky takes the mantle. So you are familiar with the literature? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that part. Okay. I read the abstract. <laughs> I read the canon, but, uh, you know... <laughs> can't just read the abstract josh <laughs> i looked at the figures also right god <laughs> gotta read the paper man uh, yeah all right is there anything else you guys have uh have in the docket for the feels on this one at all not for endgame itself i mean yeah. i wanted to see it again still yeah. any chance i think um my if I had to pick an overall th- theme, it was like generations and. Hey, uh, Patrick Spivey people. just joined us, by the way. Whoa, Patrick! <laughs> What's up, Spivey? Oh, uh, Phil, Phil had enough of us. Bye, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Phil Bot. He was done. He was like seven thirty-two. He's out. <laughs> I'm done. Had yeah, enough of your shit. Go pet my dog. Eat some num nums. I'm done. Hey, Phil's back. Hi, right. Phil. Thanks. Little uh, Phil though. Little trouble with uh, AT and T. Bastards. <laughs> Don't we all? We have AT and T now too. Yeah. I did that. Yeah. They're installing fiber at my house, like within the next year. Local, fiber. local company, huh? Google Fiber. No, not Google Fiber. Some other company, but AT&T. it's it's not Comcast. So. I respect that. Yeah, this is AT and T's uh, fiber, and I'm less oh, than yeah. impressed by it. Yeah. Mm. Is it just two guys with like flashlights that like? <laughs> um, no, I was saying Phil. Who's fiber? You just you- out. So sorry. I think you should be. That I think <laughs> now you're on my bottom right there we go. because uh, down there. Um, I think the big theme for me was um generations and specifically fatherhood and girl power because of course yeah yeah maybe i just had john on the brain when i was watching it because john's a dad oh my gosh yeah like i'd just like to see a few more cyborgs in there (laughs) robotics i i think that's underplayed yeah how much of, of nebula is organic Maybe we'll get uh oh shoot what is it Moto, who's the machine organism designed for killing or Terminator. something like that. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> we'll get the Terminator crossover. Is Terminator Fox property? I don't know who owns that. Or maybe they're making a new Terminator that Arnold's is in. Yeah, that's supposed to be a Buffy, direct guys. sequel to Terminator Two. Hmm. I know it's tangential, but they're making a new Buffy. Modoc. That's what I was thinking of. Movie or a show? Wait, who is that, show? John? Modoc is, well, mechanized organism designed only for killing. Hmm. What series is this from? Uh, he's a, I think he's originally, is he, I guess he, it was part of AIM. So I'm not sure whose villain that would have been originally. Um, I guess Avengers, really. And maybe I think X Men faced him a couple of times. Um, I'll share an a an image of him with you guys so we can see what Modoc looks like. If you've never seen what Modoc looks like, he's uh one of the more ridiculous looking villains to ever appear in a comic book, which is saying something. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so that's Modoc. <laughs> All right. Yeah. He's one of your people, Phil. 
That looks wicked. You should get one tattooed on your chest, Phil. <laughs> yeah. You just get it tattooed on your face and have his little legs like down on your neck. Just oh, let oh, your yeah. face be his face. You could grow a beard and do like dreads. In the no, listen to this. Modok is mostly face with some scrawny legs and uh, scrawny arms that. No, you should totally. Used. You should cosplay oh. as that. You just need to get like. It's almost like a helmet, and then you just do it like a black, like unitard for like the rest of the body. Yeah, I say this only because we love I, him, but uh, obviously this is who Nate Waldron needs to cosplay as. <laughs> I'll make it happen. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Nate Waldron in a black unitard. <laughs> That's magical. Yeah, I don't plan on wearing one of those anytime soon. Come on, Phil. Mm, nope. You're no fun. Nope. Don't plan to be. They're rebooting Buffy. That was my contribution to this conversation. <laughs> I'll look it up. They rebooted uh, Sabrina. Sabrina's awesome. Yeah, on Netflix, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. I haven't I like watched it. it yet. Cool. It's a lot darker than uh, the other fluffy one. Yeah. The Clarissa Explains It All one. It's different. Yeah. I kind of like it. I... I will admit I did watch it, um, only because she was dark. You know that that's that's it. I, yeah, sure, it has nothing to do with the main actress looking like a comic. But she looks like a comic book character from Archie. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, huh? Same universe, Phil. <laughs> I knew that. What was the name of the uh, robot in X Men who was sent back from the future? I don't know that. It's like Nimrod or something. Oh, yeah, Nimrod. Nimrod? Yeah. Yep. Thought so. I want to see him. He's a he's pretty uh, badass. Well, so Nimrod is a um, X Men villain, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Nimrod's a Sentinel, just a highly advanced Sentinel. Yes. Oh, they kind of did that already in the. Uh, Oh, what's it called? Um, I can't think of what it's called. Whichever X Men film that was, where they start in the future and then they go back, um, has a bunch of the really cool X Men characters in it. The Future actually. Past. Yeah, yeah, Days of Future Past. Past. Also a great story. I mean, for the comic books, but. Yeah, I mean, the movie. I'm really glad that Marvel is going to have MCU is going to have access to the X Men again. Yeah, Let's leave it at that. Really, looking, for, looking forward to those. My feelings of Fox movies and how they treat the X Men over time. Yep. Yeah. I just hope there's some way to bring back uh, Black Widow. That's all. Yeah. Well, she has I a mean, prequel. Infinite Black Widows now, right? Because we've got multiverse. So. Hmm. Right got- from all those Thanos and Hitlers being killed by Steve Rogers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Masturbatory. I'm gonna be a hero. Captain America becomes a baby killer. That's it. Turns out the uh, skulls in the uh, Velo Paris in the uh, caverns and whatnot, those are all Hitler and Thanos skulls, actually. He just brings them back as trophy. Yeah, Steve's sick, man. <laughs> He's a dark dude. He started, started off okay, but man, yeah, he just kills Hitler. And every single day, he's like, I can do this all day. <laughs> He comes home and like the 18th time he's like, hey, I killed Hitler today. She's like, I know. <laughs> I know. But did you mow the grass? Mm-hmm. Mow yeah. the fucking grass. You can't keep his head in here anymore. God. You need a man cave, Steve. <laughs> All right. Oh. Do we want to end it there? I think that might be it. Mow the <laughs> fucking uh, grass. We got we got a few people watching us right now. Anybody got any questions out there before we uh, call this good for the night? Any uh, any audience questions? I'm not sure. I'm sure. Anything for uh, Halloween based on? Game or <laughs> almost for viewers, you got any uh cool ideas besides a uh cave with a bunch of skulls? Oh, 
Knowles from Thanos. Oh, uh, Tammy uh, said Nisa. I don't know what that means, though. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that note, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, it's been a good time. Endgame yeah. was awesome. I'm super excited to see what comes next. Yeah. Good to see y'all's faces. Oh, this is probably so. One news thing that came out for the future of Marvel Universe: we're finally going to get an Asian superhero in the lineup. That's cool. Yeah, they're going to have a martial artist who I do not recognize the character's name at all. Um, it is, let's see, Shang Chai. Any idea, Josh? No. Okay. Yeah, I have no clue either. Not sure who he is, but uh, he's going to be joining the Marvel Universe who as a standalone it? movie. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if they'll do like since like Phase Four is going to be ten. They said it's going to be more space, like sci-fi, fantasy focused. If they'll still do, I'm assuming they'll still do have some Earth-based things to sprinkle in there. Oh, and well, they're bringing the Eternals, right? Oh, they are? Yeah, they are bringing in the Eternals, which seems like a really odd thing for them to bring they, in. What is that? The, the really shitty TV show? No, not the shitty TV show. Like their own <laughs> version of it, I guess. They're supposed to be doing Eternals. I need to watch um, that. I, have, I haven't seen it. It just looks horrible. But Yeah, it bombed pretty hard is my understanding. Um, yeah, I need to watch the other. What was the other one with the uh, kids uh, TV show? Um Umbrella Academy? No, it's, it's Marvel. Uh, oh. oh, uh, well, I can't think what the um the one you talking about the one that's coming out this fall? No, it's been out for a while. Oh, okay, because the one based on the New Mutants is coming out this fall, right? I think still the really really dark um Fox property that's kind of a thriller. Runaways. Oh, okay. And there's also yeah. Cloak and Dagger. I haven't seen either of those, but I heard Runaways was pretty good. I wonder if Ileana's going to be in the new Mutants. I've been hoping to see her. Oh, I would love to see a face-off between uh, Ileana and uh, Scarlet Witch. <laughs> oh, and the uh, Inhumans was the horrible TV show, not the Eternals. Ah, oh, that's right, yeah. Which is fine. I have no, I feel no attachment to in humans at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I like the I like the dog, but from yeah. the I don't know if he's even in the show or not. Yeah, I watched a- Agents of Shield, but uh, not a single episode of Inhumans. Yeah, you didn't last long. Hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Good things. Go called wraps. Yep. Yep. So I gotta eat the have food. Have a good night, everybody. I gotta eat the food too. Y'all have, have a good go. night. I have to go feed the baby. Yeah, baby has to eat the food. <laughs> Phil, what are you doing with food? Plugging in. <laughs> there we go. I was hoping you said that. There's the answer. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, See ya. guys. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.